what's up youtube so i've been getting a lot of questions recently asking me for an updated hecarim guide kind of like runes build itemization pathing everything um so recently i've actually spent the last few weeks trying to figure out everything that actually works and after discussing with uh Tarzan as well i'm pretty sure that i actually figured out how to play hecarim nowadays in a way that you can 1v9 every game so step one is you always want to run out to your blue buff bush here right that's like guarding your blue so what you're going to do is you're actually just going to wait here until about 110 to make sure that the enemy team isn't like late invading you. And then you're going to walk over here at about like 110, whatever it is, and you're going to drop a ward like that. Then you're going to walk over here and you saw raptors. And the reason why is because what we're going to do this game is you pretty much do this like three cam clear of, of your top side. And then you refill clear your blue towards your Krugs after. And doing this gives you such an insane early advantage. It's crazy. So by the way, for rune setup, what you're going to do is you're going to want to take Ingenious Hunter. And the reason why is because after we full clear our top side, uh, the reason why it's so good is because we can reset with tier. And then when you get your tier this early on in the game, it's really, really nice because you... Because uh, after you get your tier, you start like sacking from like three minutes in, right? Which means you have your mirror mana completed by like 14 minutes. So the reason why I actually do red into Krug's Raptors instead of red uh, raptors krugs is because then when i do my refill clear after my krugs are going to spawn right after my raptor is finished right instead of having to wait around for like two minutes so you can look when you are clearing your top side for either a gank like mid or a gang top but for me personally i've tried it. it doesn't really feel that great it's usually better if you just sit here and you just like just kind of like full clear your top side and then you reset after also versus brox of this game but it looks like his kaylin's afk not entirely sure what's going on with that. So now we just reset. We grab our tier. He might get the kill on Sorak here. He doesn't? Good. So he wastes a lot of time there. I think the mid is actually okay though. There's no way. I'm holding on to my uh, upgrade level 3. I don't understand why I got there in time, right? Yeah. So I'll never get there in time. So what I want to do is while I'm doing my blue. We're just going to ward a uh, scuttle like that. So now we're just going to sit here. We're going to take our blue. And then usually what I like doing is after I clear my wolves, I like going for the scuttle if it's uncontested. And the reason why is because you're going to have to wait about like 20 seconds anyways for your raptors to spawn. So that's why it's better to like do something to kill off time in the meantime. So now you're going to see we run here. We just grab this. And then we're going to walk through mid and then we're going to grab our raptors. So as you guys can see, it's a very, very, very consistent path early that, you know, like, there's no real counter for, like, the enemy team can't really invade you, they can't really do much. So you just kind of sit here and you get, like, a crazy free farm off. The only thing they can really do is, like, what they did this game with, like, early ganking bot, but even then, it's, like, whatever. Uh, so usually what you want to do is after you finish your, like, second full clear, right, you typically want to look for a dragon, typically. Uh, but the thing about this game is that I might look for a top gank. Yeah, we're going to look for a top gank here, especially because Kanan's here. So we leave one little one alive, and then we finish it with Q, so now we have Q sacks. Perfect. And just like that, game over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, GG. Just like that, GG. Game is done. So now, uh, with this build, you usually either want to go Tabby. Or you go merch at, or not not tabby. You don't want to go tabby, so I meant to say. So your play is usually either to go uh, Ionian boots or merch ads. This game, since I don't feel like they have that much CC, I'm gonna go for Ionian boots rush, and then we'll grab a longsword. So there's still 20 seconds left on our Gromp here. So instead of just like dicking around and wasting time, I'm just gonna grab dragon. So from this point on, the game becomes like very, very, very cut and clear, right? Like you just uh, perma full clear, take dragons off respawns and stuff like that. It's just that early pathing that's different. So now as for build, right? How do you want to build Hecarim in this scenario? What you want to do is you want to go serrated Dirk Rush, and then you actually want to complete your mana immune. Since you get your tier super early on after full clearing your bot side, you can actually get your mirror mana at like 14, 15 minutes, right? So the reason why in the past I told you guys to go BF Sword was because you would need that mu you would need like that 1300 gold, I guess, to like stack your mirror mana until it's completed. But now, since you actually get your tier on at like two minutes, you don't actually need to get the BF Sword anymore. So you go Serrated Dirk into Man Immune, and then after Man Immune, if the enemy team has a bunch of squishies, like this game for example, we're gonna go Duskblade. 
But if the enemy team has a lot of like tanks or stuff like that, then you actually want to go either Shojin or Cleaver, and then after that you get Eclipse. So the Serrated Dirk will always build into either Eclipse or it'll build into Dustblade. And then like let's say you're going for the Dustblade full assassin build. Well then you just build depending on the team, right? So do you need uh do you need to get serpents, do you need to get Cerildos, stuff like that. And just like take it as the game goes on. But that's like pretty much how to play Hackram nowadays. I'm gonna be uh, going to the EU server soon. And I feel like doing this Hackram setup every game should be really, really, really easy for me to hit super high rank. Because you feel as strong as you used to back in the day. Especially with how early you can play your mirror mana. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grab my red. And then after red, I might look for Scuttle and uh, Herald. So the other thing about this build that you have to keep in mind as well. Is that one of the things you really want to do. Is you always want to uh, sit on your, your yellow trinket. You don't actually really want to upgrade into Oracle Lens. And the reason why is because upgrading into Oracle Lens, like, Hecarim, first off, doesn't really need that. Because his ganks are just so fast that, like, he can gank no matter what, right? Uh, you just sit on your wards all game, and then that way, you're going to notice that you never even need to buy pinks. Because you got so much vision from the trinkets that why would you ever get a pink, right? So we're going to just check his top side here, see if there's anything up. There is. So we're just going to grab his Gromp here, and then after that, we'll look for the Heralds. So now that uh, now that we see that he has none of his top side left, we're just gonna grab the herald. So you guys see how it's just about like stacking neutrals, perma farming camps, and then just getting kills on any side lane where you think there might be kills. It's a very, very, very easy to replicate playstyle. Extremely safe and extremely high reward. It's low risk, high reward. That's what I love so much about it. And the build, you actually feel like you can one v nine at like two items always. So that's why it's like if you guys are Hecarim players and you really like playing Hecarim right now. All I'm saying is it goes a little crazy. I'm just gonna invade his wolves here because I have three Q stacks and I feel like I can kill him if he comes. So he's gonna shove out one more wave and then he's gonna walk here. I'm not sure yet if he's gonna start on blue or wolves, but if he comes to blue, this is why I'm saving my W by the way. Because if he comes here and I have my W up, I just like insta kill him. So now we just pop the ghost, he's dead. See? Just like that. And then what I can actually do is I can just shot, dive their top laner. <laughs> nice. I mean, listen. It was a 4v5, admittedly. But I feel like I kind of like covered all the basics. So that's pretty much how to play Akram nowadays, right? Like, if you do that every game, you should be able to 1v9 no matter what. Even if it is a 5v5 and not a 4v5 like that game. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you all for the next one. Peace. I don't test this. this isn't a guide, bro. Make a new one. Okay. Why would I ever make a new one? I covered the runes, right? I covered the itemization, right? And I covered the early pathing. What more would you guys need? Guide on a 4v5? That's autistic. No, it's not. Because it literally covers everything you need to cover. Not even solo Renekton only uploads 4v5s. Okay, guys. I feel like you guys are under the misconception. That I'm like other league content creators. Look at my season 12 Hackram guide. I went 4 and 9, inted, and I started talking about uh. midgets in game. Watch this. It's like, do you guys really think I give a fuck? As long as the content's chill, it is what it is. <laughs> Only this beast of man can upload a game of him feeding and called the ultimate guide. I didn't go crazy this game. I dropped 20 kills every other game in Challenger. So that's how you play Hacker Mid <laughs> The best. So you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, be sure to like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, you think I give a fuck, dude? Win or loss, fucking ants or 1v9. As long as it's good content, it's good content. Fuck everything else.